do have a, a new letter from the Smiths. Them. And uh, we'd had a letter from the Crows as well. I've sent that out, but I know not all of you get those. So there's a, a copy of it there. If you wanted to make a copy, it's, it's fairly lengthy. You're welcome to make a copy and take it home. Um, I do need, I, I see some volunteers at the back there. I do need some help afterwards putting together the camp book. Uh, I see, I will, oh, anybody can. It won't take long. They're, they're all printed out. It's just a matter of stapling them and folding them. Remind me. And the other, the other one is uh, about lunch for the Harringsons on Sunday. So I'll talk about that. Uh, the, the theme for the camp next week is Proverbs 4.23. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. It's one of the verses I think we... I, I don't guess we memorized it with the quieting the noisy soul, but we it as our theme verse for, for one of our years. And uh, I was going to talk to you about that tonight. I've, it's not like I've never talked to you about this before, but uh, keep, you know, the word just means guard. Guard your heart. And, uh, you know, you hear of people having their heart broken, people, you know, all different kinds of things we attribute to our hearts. Uh, and God says, watch out. Be careful of, of what goes on in, in your heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence. And the last part is, for out of it are the issues of life. You know, so when something issues forth, it means it comes out. And what he's talking about is, you've got to watch out because what goes into your heart is going to come out. That's what's going to come out in how you relate to people, how you relate to character, so on. That's what's going to come out. There's a lot of problems that attack our heart. You, you've probably experienced all of them at one time or another. Anger. Have you ever gotten angry over just some stupid little thing? You think, what about uh, fear, bitterness, lust, dishonesty, and so on. Yeah, God doesn't want those in there. He doesn't want them, he doesn't want them coming out, but he doesn't, the reason they come out is because we let them in. Um, there's a lot of experiences that affect our heart. Think about that. Wealth, poverty, <laughs> can, if you let it, you, know, you can be real happy being poor or you can be happy being rich, but it doesn't mean you will be. <laughs> That's an experience. Uh, your health, your work, your culture. You know, your culture can affect your heart. Your heredity, your marriage, relationships with people. There's all kinds of things that affect our heart. And God is saying, watch out. Guard your heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the, the issues of life. Uh, and one of the things he's saying there is don't let your experiences control you. Or decide who you are. It's not those outward things. It's, it's your relationship with, with the Lord. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to look at several scriptures this evening. Ephesians 4 is where we'll start. Many of you will know this. This is one of the verses we learned uh, with quieting the noisy soul, I believe. I remember verse 31 by the word, not a word, waste. Bugs Bunny. Waste. Waste myself uh, at all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. Put away from you with all malice. Be kind one to another, tender hearted, giving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. The key word I wanted to get to there is the word tender hearted. When God says, keep your heart, I believe He will agree with Ephesians here where He said, we need to be tender hearted. I'll give you a warning here have a tender heart, you're going to feel more things. You're going to, you're going to get hurt more. You know, it's, going to, it's going to be more experience. But that's okay. Don't harden it. Don't just say, I don't like that feeling, so I'll harden my heart. God wants us to be tender hearted, especially towards people. That's, that's what we're talking about here. Toward people, toward him, tender hearted. I'd like you to go from there to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. He, he talks about this again, and, and he gives an illustration with Israel. Chapter 3, uh, let's see, let me read verses 8 and 9. He, he warns here about hard hearts. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. 
kind of in your mind go back to Israel and you know wilderness wanderings and so on. You know, there was just times when they would not, they weren't tender-hearted to God. They wouldn't, you know, God would say, "Okay, you know, I've shown you, I've shown you my power. We've, you know, we've given these ten plagues, and, and now I want you to do this." Not doing that, <laughs> you know. Uh, they would harden their hearts and, and not obey Him. And uh, you know, there, there was times when they would just say, "Well." We don't have enough water. We don't have enough food. God can't take care of us. And they would harden their hearts uh, toward the Lord. Um, and he tells us what causes it. Verse, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Puts it in two different ways there. Verse 12 evil heart of unbelief, verse 13, the deceitfulness of sin. The thing that that is at the back of having, hardening our heart toward the Lord and towards other people uh, is unbelief and sin. God can't do that. I've asked people about relationships and, you know, you're hoping to get that relationship back and, oh no, that's that's never going to happen. Come on, you know, maybe it won't, but God could do it and you can can ask the Lord to do it and you can trust the Lord. Uh, we need to guard against those negative things that will harden our heart. And they come up so frequently. The same for me as it is for you. Uh, don't, don't you worry about that, as one of our premier, premier say. Uh, hard, hardening our heart is probably, well, is very natural. <laughs> it's a natural thing to do. But God wants us to be supernatural. He doesn't want us just to do the natural thing. It's very normal in, in the world. When, when we're hurt, we harden up. We walk away. God says, be tenderhearted. And the, the words that I think help us, there's many, but these are three that uh, I notice come up often, are the words grace, mercy, and peace. Grace, mercy, and peace. Um, Paul often would start his letter with, with those words. And he said something I think that's important for us to notice. For instance, 1 Timothy 1, 2. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace are from God. He starts 2 Timothy the same way. Timothy, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. And I think that's so important to notice. If you're saved, you have... Grace, mercy, and peace. That's really important. Now, you may not feel like you have it, but we don't have it by feeling, we have it by faith. You ever seen that picture of the train, you know, or pulled by faith, and you don't want it to be pulled by feelings. You know, that's, at the, that's one of the last cars on, on the train. Uh, grace. Grace is receiving something good you don't deserve. Mercy is judgment you deserve that's withheld. I'm trying to think of a good definition of peace. Um, not just the absence of war. Um, anyway, you, I've, I've been noticing, I get asked regularly now what words mean. Very small people. And uh, you know how hard it is sometimes to define a really normal word? <laughs> it's uh, quite interesting. But anyway, let's get back. Grace. Uh, we have received it as Christians. For by grace are you saved through faith. We've received grace. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Unchanging God has shown grace to us. And we know from Scripture it's sufficient. There's enough. That means there's more than enough. And we need to understand, first of all, that we have it. It's come from the Lord if we're saved. And then we need to practice giving it practice doing it. Colossians, he says, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. There, there's a verse in Psalm, let me find it, uh, Psalm 32, verse 7. In Psalm 32, one of the, the confession psalms. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I think, I think songs can go both ways. Because we have grace, we can sing. 
And uh, sometimes we need to sing so that we remember we have grace. <laughs> uh, we need to remember we have the songs of deliverance that God has given us. Turn with me, if you would, to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Let's look at a couple of verses there. I mentioned one already. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3, uh, verse 10, he's talking about put on the new man. Verse 12, he says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Then he starts listing some of the things we're putting on. Bowels of mercies. Now that's not a common expression nowadays. But it just means a heart of compassion. That's what we're talking about. Not hardening our hearts. Bowels of mercies. Kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. Be ye thankful. I find it interesting how they all just kind of weave together. You know, grace, mercy, and peace. One part of each other. Then he goes on, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Grace. What a blessing to have the grace of God in our lives. That he would show us favor. That he would bless us with salvation. And he, he warns us, guard your heart, keep your heart. In uh, Matthew 10, he said, freely you've received, freely give. God didn't charge you. He paid, he gave. He says, now, now freely give. The second word that, that we're looking at is mercy. Again, if you're saved, you've received it. Mercy. We love to receive mercy. <laughs> you ever had it happen, you know, where somebody could charge you $20 and they say, oh, I just have it for free. And they show mercy. You, know? you owe them, but they don't, they don't collect it. The people that come to my mind were the blind men. You know, when Jesus was going by, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. And, and Jesus stopped and, and showed mercy. Uh, as Christians, the, the Bible says we've come to the mercy seat. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us of all sin. It's a, it's a precious, precious thing. We rejoice in mercy. Psalm 13, I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Mercy is what gave us salvation. We sing, mercy there was great and grace was when I was at Bible college, Doyle was a, yeah, often people were taking piano lessons from Doyle. And you could hear up and down the halls, that song. <laughs> That's the first one she started them all. You know, it wasn't always recognizable, but <laughs> no, it usually was. Uh, at Calvary, boy, you know, that, was the, that was the song that they started off with, Key of C. Uh, there, there's another song, when I deserved judgment, he gave me mercy. That's a blessing. We need to remember that we have it, and we need to remember it enough that we offer it to others instead of hardening our, our hearts. Um, James 2, he warns us, he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. In the, what we call the Beatitudes, Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, they shall receive mercy. We need to guard our heart. It, it's... I don't know, I, I think it's why so many people now have things in their ears where they can't hear you. They don't want to think. They don't want to hear their heart. We need, to, as Christians, we need to hear God's Holy Spirit speaking to our heart. And sometimes it'll be rebuke. And we'll think, I didn't show grace. No mercy. Not as grace should be. We're going to be tempted to let grace and mercy depart. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Resist the urge. Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, giving. Hebrews 12 and uh, verse 14, take a look there if you would. 12 and verse 14. Next verse is one that we memorized, one of the young people memorized. Follow peace with all men, holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently. Similar expression to what he used in Proverbs. 
looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Bitterness doesn't just affect us, it's going to affect others. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birth. I've been thinking, I, I need to have a sermon, including this verse, where God mentions people and uh, something about their character. This is one that I wouldn't want to be my name. <laughs> you think, oh, oh, you know. But there's others that are, are, are positive. And God just warns us here. Follow peace. Don't let it get away. Don't let it get away from your perspective. We can't change what others do. We can't make others, you know, who will be at peace with me kind of a thing. Uh, but we can do our best. He says to follow peace. It's like we read in Colossians, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I believe that word rule means to be the umpire. Play. <laughs> Empire's rulings are final. Do it diligently. We don't want to fail of the grace of God. You can just mark it down. Bitterness is never of the Lord. It never is. And uh, God's wisdom is different than the world's wisdom. There will be things you'll do and the world will say, yeah, you should do that. They deserve that. <laughs> but is God convinced? Great, 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 great words. There's so many more. These are just three. Guard your heart. Don't let grace, mercy, and escape your heart. When we talk about keeping our heart, it's not only what we let in, it's what we let get out. <laughs> you know, there's things we don't want in there, but we, there's other things we don't want to let them out. You know, we want to keep grace, mercy, and peace. Uh, let that be the, the ones that occupy. In Proverbs 23, the Lord says, My son, give me thine heart. Main verse, keep thy heart with all diligence. Out of it, issues. Just a, a reminder for us to con consider, do some soul searching. Think about those areas, grace, mercy. We often sing, and we, we know the verses, Psalm 139, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way. Lead me in the way everlasting. Don't take the world's way. It doesn't matter. Grace, mercy, and peace. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Any comments or questions? Before